Dr. Krell and the Carnix of Terror. And now, Ireland's award-winning Crazy Dog Audio Theatre presents Dr. Krell and the Carnix of Terror. Shin a scale na es she, August on Carnix of Terror. August Cunis is bra lo tribloid a crohu, Lenadini simply. Oh, wait, that's Irish, and of course, none of you speak a word. And there's me running away with myself, Os Gaelga. So I'll start again. Here is a tale of the she and of their carnex of terror, and how the good people love to meddle in the affairs of us foolish mortals. Our story takes place far off in the west of Ireland. It begins in what was once the stables of a huge manor house, where some strange foreigners are staying. So, Ratwang, how long will you be staying here? Because no, I... not for long. Oh well, I see. Well, well, if you're gonna set up your lab here, safety comes first. Oh, of course. That's the one reason why I never ever remove these. Your rubber gloves. Bah! Not just any rubber gloves, my dear brother. These rubber gloves are red. Red? Yes, red. Red in memory of, of. Oh yes, that. Yes. Well, we won't go back over... I vowed never to remove these gloves until the day I make them all pay. Jeez, Rodwing, are you still bearing that grudge? Ah! Enough exposition. Set this device on the workbench, would you? Sure. Careful! Don't damage the track point passively stabilized fire control sighting mechanism. Sighting mechanism? Of course. A DEW cannot function without one. DEW? Directed energy weapon. In this case, a laser beam. Oh, not another death ray. Yeah, I shall demonstrate. Oh, no thanks. <laughs> we can do with that. Observe, you don't need this old aerosol spray paint can, do you? It's nearly empty, see? Do you mind? Okay, fine. Wonderful. Now, I position our target, this spray can. Yeah. Then I focus the sighting mechanism on the DEW. And finally, stand back as I pull the trigger! Oh, bother. Something is wrong. Does, uh, does this need to go somewhere? What? The plug? Who? Oh, the plug. Oh, yes. Of course. The plug. Plug it in, would you? Oh, jeez. Okay. Now, look, Rutwang, I'm happy to help you, you know. But, gosh, lethal weapons of mass destruction? It's a bit too... What? Enticing, exciting, exhilarating. Illegal! I mean, Ireland is a pretty relaxed place, but even the Irish are not going to be happy about WMDs in the hands. Gloves! The gloves! The hands! Whatever! It's the dragon, isn't it? No! Your wife loathes me! She doesn't know that I'm letting you set up out here in the stables. Oh, keeping secrets from the little woman, She's eh? obsessed with her archaeological dig. Well, that's why we're here in Ireland. Your domestic anguish is of little concern to me. Our son Jack is coming soon. And when he arrives, she'll be in a good mood, and I can tell her about you then. Meanwhile, just keep whatever you're doing contained. Contained? Is the ecological Armageddon of this planet contained? The irrefutable data is in. 60% of all wildlife has been exterminated in the last 45 years. 80% of land animals and insects have lost their natural habitat. Extinctions are proceeding 1,000 times their natural rate. The writing is on the wall, see? What? Oh, yes, you've put up a chart. I have dedicated my life to eradicating the one species culpable for exterminating life on this planet. Human beings? Yes. The problem, my dear brother, is how to cull the guilty perpetrators without damaging the fragile ecosystem. You mean, get rid of humanity? The species must be culled. Humankind's inherent greed has inextricably bound them to the unsustainable status quo. Right. Now, I have come to see that what is urgently required is a directed energy weapon which specifically targets humanity. Somehow, a sound wave or sonic boom at just the right frequency, something 
If I can develop such a device, ecological destruction may yet be averted. But time is running out. Now stand back. Uh, here? Uh, a, bit, a bit further back. Uh, yes, just to the left. Yes, that's good. Now, good. get ready. <laughs> Remember, Cedric, how when we were boys, we would throw aerosol cans into fires just for the explosions? <laughs> how we would laugh and laugh with delightfully delirious gloating glee. You laughed and laughed. I nearly lost an eye. Nonsense! We all enjoy a bombastic explosion. It's cathartic! We're not kids anymore, you know. Ready and... Can we just wait? Fire! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the can wasn't empty. Oh, great! Paint splattered all over my molarizer. Your what? I call it the molarizer. Your latest invention? Yes, it's the prototype. <sighs> Looks like a submarine on tank treads with a giant screw nose to me. It's a self-contained, tunnel-boring auger machine. Interesting. Yes, you can, you can burrow underground with this thing. It can go as fast through the ground as an average man on an average bicycle on an average road. 15.572 kilometers an hour, you say? Yes! And it can keep on going and going and going since it uses the material it drills through as fuel. Even to the center of the earth? Uh, sure, I guess. You know, my brother, I think you have finally invented something that someone may actually want to buy. Yeah, it's been my problem all along. Oh, it's the quandary of all self-indulgent artists. I've tried telling my wife Augusta about it, but she is not interested. No, but I'm hoping to interest... Me first energy in it. Me first energy? The war profiteering American multinational corporation spreading disinformation whilst unrestrainedly sodomizing our dying Mother Earth? Well, yeah. They make pretty neat sporting goods as well. I figure they might want the molarizer for digging tunnels. A company rep is coming out here to see it. Perhaps I could put your molarizer to no, no, no. use? No, 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 no. Uh, a deal is a deal, Rodwick. I don't tamper with your stuff. You don't tamper with mine. But I would... No, 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 no way. And that's final. There, there's still all that fallout from your last escapade. <laughs> yes, the half-life of those isotopes is another 97 years. <laughs> Meanwhile... A few miles away, Sedgwick's wife was about to address her diggers digging at Knochnariha Oskashlona Dagda. Interns, listen up, interns. Thank you, Faulkner. Fact na. Now, all of you certainly know that I do not go on and on about my achievements. Of course, that's all right. I have been the only woman featured on the cover of the Archaeological Times. Ooh. Yes, the greatest of all archaeological publications. But you must be don't so... Don't like to rest on my laurels. No. No, I hang it in front of my tent. See? Yes, lovely frame. See, everyone, that's me on the cover of the Archaeological Times. Hey, that's Whoopi. Yes, I'm standing there with Whoopi Goldberg, Tina Fey, and Sarah Silverman. Wow. Yeah, I made the cover when I discovered the humor section of the Lost Library of Alexandria. See, I'm holding Aristotle's big book of Grecian jokes in one arm and my little genius son Jack in the other. And we women, we, <laughs> we're all laughing. <laughs> but seriously, unlike my male colleagues who only care about their egos, I actually do not talk about my own accomplishments. Right, Faulkner? Faulkner. Yes. So, not, not really excited that today I received an email from the Archaeological Times. Ooh, yes, saying. Hey, you read it out there, Faulkner, if you please. Uh, all right. It says... Nice and loud. We are here to hear of your many discoveries in Ireland. Naturally. And are looking forward to having you and the legendary Carnix of Terror on our next front cover. Oh, the front cover! Yes, oh, the front that's cover. right. <laughs> so you all see, no pressure, of course, but any sign of that Carnix? No, Professor. But here's what we have found. The golden brooch of Finn McCool. 
Mm-hmm. The engraved bronze shield of Queen Maeve. Is that all? And two gold forks, a druid's cauldron, and the chariot of Ku Cullen. Ooh, just look at those wheels. Yes, they still spin. Wonderful, and... What is that, Faulkner? What's going on? There have been more strange incidents. Oh, bah. Unpaid interns will always have sex with each other. They're young, they have no money, and they dig around in the mud all day. It's to be expected. No, Professor. Incidents as in strange... Strange blue lights glowing in the cave. I put my little trowel against the wall, and when I came back later, there it was, gone. And the music. (laughs) What is wrong with you people? That's obviously that crazy old local woman. Kathleen? It must be her, staggering about the standing stones, playing that wretched violin. Fiddle. Whatever. Legends say that the palace of Tuhad de Dallin stands under this hill with all the gold of the Dagda himself and the deadly Carnix of Tur. <laughs> well, well, it better be. Not that I care about it, but the Archaeological Times wants me on the cover with it. Yes, of course. The megalithic burial mound, the standing stones, the network of caves, all point to that legendary Celtic battle horn. Legends say that the good folk are here. Oh no, not these local good folk superstitions again. Oh yes, them. Them? The... The, the what? The Nadini Maha. Who? The Nadini Ushula. The Nadini Nuganuk. English, please, English. They say they cannot say their true name aloud, for it's... Hard it's, to pronounce. Yes, that too. But I was going to say unlucky. Very unlucky. Cursed, even. Well, listen up, team. I am... No, you are... No. We are going to find that Carnix. There are some here who hope you don't. Locals. I learned long ago to pay no attention to locals and their local myths. What's mythology to me or me to mythology? I will not be scared away by men and their insipid superstitions. Take Sedgwick, my worthless husband. I never let him stand in my way. Why, he's never even seen one of my digs. Make way now, get out of the way. Make way for your man here. Now let him throw. He's fierce important now. Uh, is this the person we need to talk to, Johnny? Yes, sir. I do believe it is, sir. Uh. Yes. I am Professor A.J. Horkenheimer. Who are you? Uh, Simon Rexroth, representative of Me First Energy. Oh, that multinational corporation? <laughs> yeah. We're the ones laying the underground pipeline. Pipeline? Mm. Uh, sure, you must have read about it yeah. in the paper. <laughs> the paper yeah. <laughs> big, big construction. Oh, it's big. Massive, like. Mm. Biggest hullabaloo here since the Star Wars movie on Skellig oh, Me Hall. Big, yeah. oh, 557 construction jobs. Yes, and two of those jobs will be permanent. <gasps> oh, two of them. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, oh, the yes, blessings yes. They, oh, get, get, up, get up off your knees. That's oh, fine. I'm yes, sorry, sir, for embarrassing you with my knees. What is this all about? The delay. Delay? Delay? Oh, yes, the delay. Yeah, we need to have this site cleared in four days. No, I'm sorry. That's impossible. Mm. Oh, no, ma'am. I'm afraid it is very possible. It is a done deal that's after being done, do you see? I have done no deal. We have a government permit which allows us Faulkner, to... Faulkner, I'll do the talking. Sorry, Professor. We've been assured by the authorities here that we would have full cooperation. I have a signed contract, see? Well, excuse me, but I have been assured by the authorities that this here is a site of ours, protected by a preservation order. See? Yeah, well, a contract beats a preservation. No, a preservation beats a contract. A contract beats a preservation. No. Just, who do you think you are? I am Professor A.J. Horkenheimer. Do you know why I call myself A.J.? Because Because pro- throughout my career I have struggled in a field dominated by men. Well, that may be, Men but- like you with little clipboards, clipboards. little trowels, Trowel. little mines, huh? and huge 
ego. Well, I'm sorry, but you know... You would not publish me because of my name. Orkenheimer? Augusta Jean, a woman's name. <laughs> so you think that just because... And when they finally published A.J. Horkenheimer and found out that A.J. Horkenheimer was a woman, imagine how they felt. Surprised? Oh, you're as useless as my husband. What's that now? Uh, well, then let me be clear. Our pipeline is going through here. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to wake up, Missy. There's a new sheriff in town. You can cooperate or not. In which case, I promise you that those who stand in our way, the way of free enterprise to exploit the weak in the name of free enterprise will be dealt with accordingly. Good day. Oh, no, Mr. Dixon. This makes me so angry, you know. She, she can forget about playing golf. No, no, no pipeline will go through. Don't worry, no. Huh. Who does he think he is coming to my dig site, swinging about his huge male ego? Oh, uh, a big corporation like that, it's Nothing bumped. to be frightened of. Listen up, interns. Mm -hmm. From now on, I want two of you to be standing guard over this site at all times. Oh. Yeah, no, that corporation is not going to get near this place. <gasps> and I want the rest of you to go slowly. I'm going slow. Yes, starting now. Use only those tiny mascara brushes to sweep. Oh, we'll be digging here for years. Precisely. Twas later that night that young Jack the son of Sedgwick and Augusta finally arrived. A starry night with a full moon. I was waiting for him, you see. Slipped past the interns on guard, I did. Hiding in the shadows of the standing stones. Hello? Is anyone out there? It's me, Jack. Oh, Nashimi, Kurama, that's Nashimi. What? Uh, hello? Oh, me, Kurama, that's Nashimi, that's a dictator. Oh. What is that? A banshee? Uh, oh, it's just an old woman. Weird. Hey, I see you there behind that standing stone. Oh, oh sir. You're human. Yes. Are you? Ah, uh, yes, yes I am, though you would doubt it to look at me. A mere Colleen, a sprite of a girl of just 12 years of age am I. Right, uh, well, maybe you can tell me where all the archaeologists are. Oh, no, 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 no. I've tried to warn them digging here, disturbing Nadini Mahanabi. Sure, um, look, do you know if they all went off somewhere Stranger. or... Stranger! What is in your even stranger black case? Oh, this? This is a saxophone. Oh, you're one of those. I play free jazz. Oh, Mother Ireland, where will it end? It's, it's just a horn, a brass horn. Well, woodwind technically. See? Oh, young man, you are in great danger. I see it now. They have lured you here to blow their carnex of terror. Oh, no. Does the gig pay? Pay? Oh, no. Oh, so it is like jazz. Look, I should just head back and... Wait! You must first hear my tale, for this is Ireland. Okay. All right, so... Now, t'was a night just as this that I sat here a young girl and played fiddle when I heard that sound, a sound I'll never forget. And when my eyes blinked, there I was in their great hall below. Well, that was a great story, but I... Wait, I... there's more. Play us a jig, they begged. Who begged? Them! Nadini Maha. T'was then I saw the great Carnex of Terror still stuck in the withered leathery lips of the Bogman Mummy. I played just one jig for them. One jig only as their great fairy tribe danced about me. And when it was over, 
there I was sitting out here among the stones. An old woman for 80 years had passed. <laughs> and a sad story it is. But now I so, really... So? Here's the rub. Are you listening? Do I have a choice? Every thousand years they must find someone new to blow the cardex. Why? I don't know. Sheer divilment. For the laugh. I'm sure it delights them just to see us humans suffer. Uh, how does this carnix horn do that? It was used in the day of Ku Colin to lay low the men of Erin. Sounding the horn long enough spells certain death for any human who listens. For it blows their minds! People say the same about free jazz. Here, I'll show you. I'm leaving. Run! Back up down the boreen! And mind the cow pie! <laughs> now, as you can see, Mr. Rexroth, the molarizer has a control panel, which can be a... Yeah, are there, is there a cup holder? Oh, sure. There's a cup holder right here. Outstanding. I'll level with you, Sledgewine. Uh, uh, Sledgewick? Yeah, the corporation is very interested in your self-contained tunnel-boring auger machine. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Rexroth. So can we But perhaps... we need to see it in action first. Of course. <laughs> we have a... Uh, Practical test in mind. You see, uh -huh. uh, we're having some uh, issues with certain <laughs> local <is> interests. <laughs> and rather than get entangled in newfangled legal wrangles, we think it's best to just cut through. Cut through? Yeah, this machine cuts through our problem. <laughs> we'll buy it. How about an even million? <laughs> 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 yeah, what do you say? Uh, gee, I have to say you have a deal, Mr. Rexroth. Great! <laughs> Let's shake hands while firmly maintaining eye contact. Okay. <laughs> Good. Here we go. <laughs> My people will be in touch. Sure thing. <laughs> I want to you down, Mr. Rexroth. The motorizer will cut through for you! Wow. I can't believe it. Uh, oh, uh, Rottweiler. Rodwang, come out from hiding. Did you hear all that? Oh, yes, I did. I'm so happy I could cry. Please don't cry. <laughs> My entire life struggling to create something of value and never getting anywhere. And now finally, this! A million dollars! <laughs> Augusta can't call me a loser anymore. Oh, she will. Yeah, yeah, but she, she'll have to admit that I am worth something. She won't. My dream has, <laughs> at long last, come true! No, 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 no stop that. Stop. No, stop the eye. Stop! <laughs> I'm crying! Not long after, Jack had arranged to meet his parents at the local pub, the Laughing Pooka where the crack was only mighty. <laughs> All right, now. Give us a, give us a line of a little tune there, man. Give us a song. All right, now the ballad of foreshadowing. I met a fairy lass upon the path. Come with me, says she, we'll have a laugh. With smiling eyes and beguiling charms. Soon I fell into her enchanting arms. So down I fell to our world below, in sacred ground where dreams do grow. To the banquet hall where the good folks feast, where music and dance shall never cease. So I joined in their jigs and reels, in fairy brogues and magic hills. I danced with joy, for I had no choice. She gave me a horn saying, let's hear your voice. Everybody now, release your grip upon my hips and put that carnix to your lips. Your poet's ego shall expand and grow when it's your own heart that you blow and blow. 
so I put my lips about that horn. I played all night, but in the morn, I could not rise from that fairy's bed. You'd never believe it, lads. Oh, wasn't I lying there, stone cold dead? Ah, oh, fairies love me and spoil your horse, but beware her spell, for it's a curse. Many's a bird has made this mistake. She'll give you your dreams as your life she Primitive people are so happy. What's that, Mom? I said primitive people are so happy. You know, entertaining me with their primeval cultural expressions. I don't know if they see it that way. You sound like your father. Where is Dad? Who cares? I have some news for both of you. Typical, isn't it? We haven't seen you in over a year, and your worthless father can't even show up Dad. on time. Dad! Dad! Sorry, I'm late. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> wow, you look great. <laughs> Give me a hug. <laughs> Leave him alone, Sedgwick. Okay, I, I have something to say. Jack is I 24 years old. Stop treating him like a child. Hello, Augustus. I left instructions for you, Sedgwick, that you were to be here no later than 8 p.m. You did? Yet you failed me again. Jack, I've got some wonderful news. Don't be so rude. What? Ask Jack about his news. He's the one who's actually accomplished something, getting his MFA in jazz whatever. Well, actually, it's improvised modal harmonic overtones, but that's not Yes, what... which I paid for, Sedgwick, not you. Yeah, well, that's going to change, because I have finally... All right, now! I, I want to tell you, I've closed the... Hush, no one cares. All right, how about another song? Hey! 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 Excuse me, excuse me, everyone. I'm sure you know me. Well, who's that? I am Professor A.J. Horkenheimer. Huh? Who's leading the dig at the Hill of the Kings? The Can we the Hill of the Kings? My genius son is here tonight. Mom, no. All the way from culturally advanced Boston, Massachusetts, USA. Ooh. Where I sent him to study and where he's just earned a graduate degree in ultra advanced super modern high culture music. No, please, I, I'm And not... he has his horn with him tonight. Oh. All right then, give us an old tune then, son. Hey. Oh, whiskey in the jar. Johnny, jump up. The ragged tackle gypsy. The rebel on the valley. Stairway to heaven. Go on, Jack. Play them something sophisticated. Yes, son. One of your own tunes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I will now play a piece from my MFA thesis, an interlude which explores the sonic overtones of inverted modal intervals. Huh. <clears throat> <laughs> They just don't get my art. I know what that's like. Oh, they're just rustic. You know, at my last gig, I improvised over 1,431 chord inversions. That sounds mm. wonderful. But the audience left halfway through. Oh? They just got up and walked out. Both of them. Both of them? So, common people don't matter, Jack. What matters now is your... My academic career, That's right. You get your MFA, your PhD, unpaid internship, part-time lecture hours, and finally... Tenure. Yes, and then pension and retirement and... and death. Yeah, see? I've got your life all planned out for you. A tenured academic. Great. You don't want to end up like your father here. What's that supposed to oh, mean? you know what that means. Please, both of you, don't start. A person 
is entitled to pursue their dreams. No, I need you both and to listen to what I have. Sponge. I'm not a sponge. I'm not going to be. I an, don't go on about uh, it, but who is paid for everything? And being on the cover of the archaeological times. Yes, okay, that's so. right. And when I find that carnix again, I will be there again because I am famous and successful, and everybody likes me. Modest too. Uh, of course I am. I'm a woman. Stop! I need to. I'm not sure about that anymore. You want to see my vagina? Do you? Oh, no. You haven't even let me touch it in 16 years. Typical male, it's all about sex. I'm leaving. Normal people have sex, you know. Oh, no woman over 40 cares about sex. Twas then that Jack went out alone into the night. Consoling himself, he was blowing that strange, twisting horn of his. Unfortunate for him, it was near Knuck Nariha. Oh, hello. Oh! Well, you gave me a fright there. Where'd you come from? Well, from here, of course. The Standing Stones. Oh, oh, I see. You're one of the interns guarding the site. You are Jack. Yeah. You have a lovely horn there. Oh, thanks. That's why I've come. Oh, you like music. It's Misha Kyo. Well, what did you think of my playing? <laughs> what? What's so funny? You're a very strange man. Me? I haven't a clue what you're on about. Uh, it was an improvised exploration of a modal fragment, pretty basic. You play no strain I recognize. Free improvisation is atonal. No soul lamenting in the night. Uh, no, I, I have no soul, but I, I... No skipping beat from the heart. No, I, you can't dance to no it. No or... apple sweet oh, kiss. No kiss. That sends a soul uh, to slumber. Slumber, yes. Then what are you playing at, Jack? I, I, I don't know. No, you don't. It's, it's all, all academic, academic bullshit. bullshit. Oh, face it. I'm a farce. I can't go on like this. I know. You do? Oh, yes. Oh, okay, this is going to sound weird, but I somehow feel that you and I are connected. We are, Jack. Oh, oh, you understand me? Yes, Jack. Oh, yes. I feel I can really talk to you. And I'm listening. I, I well, I, I, you see, I, I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> Hold me. Hold me. Oh, <laughs> there, there. Poor little Jack. I want so much to... Weave magic each time you play? Yes, yes, and have a lot of sex. Oh, well, yes. Yes, of course. Yes? Yes. Yes. Yes, we can. Uh, yes. And we will. Oh, yes. Just follow me. Yes, follow you. Come on, then. This way to the palace. Yes. I will show you how to really play. Said Sedgwick, you're a trope. I'm a trope, am yes, I? Yes, yes, a trope. The useless inventor who's never invented anything of use. Ah, says the insecure misandrous academic who hides her own insecurities beneath a constant deluge of scorn for anyone except herself. Ooh, there's Jack. What's he doing at the dig? Jack? Strange. He's walking like some kind of a zombie. Jack! Jack? Jack! Jack! Mom? Dad? Oh, I'll come back for you, Jack. Yes, come back, please. Jack, what are you doing out here? Following her. Who? Well, the intern. What intern? She's right... Wait, she was just... Did, did you see her? No. Are you all right, son? 
Of course he's all right, Sedgwick. I'm fine, but I've come to a decision. Always projecting yourself loathing onto me. I'm leaving academia. I'm not projecting. Your guilt at being a failure. Uh, hello? I'm not guilty. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yeah? Then why have I sold my molarizer machine for a million dollars? <laughs> what? That's right, Augusta. A million dollars. You hear that, Jack? Well, that's great, Dad. Thank you. You're lying. No, I'm not. Who would ever want to buy your crap? The Me First Energy Corporation. What? We made a deal. We shook hands and we stared into each other's eyes. You listen to me, Sedgwick. You are not selling anything to Me First Energy. Oh, yes, I am. You do business with them, and I swear that'll be the last straw. Oh, stop, stop. I'll see you die on the streets. Oh, yeah. With my million bucks? That corporation wants to destroy my dig. Your dig. And then I won't be on the cover of the The Archaeological Times. Oh, and you would just love that, wouldn't you? Ah, I'm leaving. You You disgust disgust me. me. Ha! That's exactly what Rotwang said you'd say. Rotwang? Bye. Yes. He put you up to this? No! He's a criminal. The next morning, out in the stables, Sedgwick and Rotvang set about. Well, just listen. And then she said she'd see me die in the streets. Yes, rather than be a success. Yeah. Finally, after all these years, it all comes together for me. And what does she do? The dragon needs you to fail. She's determined to get all the credit for finding all those legendary Celtic treasures. The chariot, the pots of gold, and that uh, carnix of terror, which can kill human beings. And then she'll be on the cover of the archaeological times. The what does what now? What, what, what does what now? The thing, the thing you said that kills human beings. Oh, oh, the, the carnix. Uh, yeah, yeah, the legends say it's an ancient Celtic battle horn that produces a sound that drives humans mad. Blow it long enough, it kills them. <laughs> it literally blows their minds. Wonderful! But that's just a myth. Oh, science. What? Mythology is not always based on the psychotropic properties of naturally occurring hallucinogens. No? No. This fabled horn obviously must resonate with precise sonic frequencies lethal to humans due to its unique composite of ancient metal alloys. Yeah, I can just see it with her on the cover of the Archaeological Times. Not if we get to it first. What? Sedgwick, it's time to stand up. I am standing. Like a man! A man with a million dollars? Yes! You and I, working together, can get this horn. We can? Indeed. I shall pole, uh, pilot the molarizer through the dig site. Yes? And you will make your million. Yes! And I, not Augusta Jean Hockenheimer, shall get the carnage. Yes! Good! <laughs> then it's settled. You will distract the dragon by taking her to dinner. Yes, I'll take... No, no wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I can't. You must. But she won't. Sedgwick! Listen to me. She is so... You can handle it. I can't. I can't. Sedgwick, (laughs) calm down. Sedgwick, and get a hold of yourself. Ouch. Yeah. Get a hold of myself. It's simple. Simple. You will distract her. But she is... Just, Just let her talk. Oh, no. About herself? Yes. About herself, of course! Distract the dragon for a couple of hours. I will contact you when I have dug that tunnel and secured the horn. Then you leave. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's happy. Except Augusta Augusta Jean Jean (laughs) Horkenheimer. Meanwhile, Jack was with Augusta and her team of diggers in the caves that lay beneath Knuck Nariha. That is so typically male of him, isn't it, Faulkner? Faulkner! Get, get going behind my back like that, conniving worm. Obviously, he's trying to ruin me, isn't he? Maybe he's just. You see, a... Jack? 
Even Faulkner knows what's going on. Faulkner! Anything you say, Mom. You know I don't like going on about it, but this is unacceptable. I need to talk to you both about a decision I've made, which I Faulkner, feel... Faulkner! Faulkner! Tell the interns to slow down. Lads, slow down now. Sweep slowly with the tiny brushes. Mom, please, interns, I... you will be here digging in this cave when even your grandchildren have their PhDs. Aww. You know, one time uh, after I... I can't listen to this anymore. Fatma? Yes, President Jack? Clinton I'm going. Called me up. And this was back when America believed in science. Perhaps it was the lore of the she, but Jack walked off alone down into the depths of the cave. This was my last chance to save him. Oh, you again. You must go. You are not supposed to be in here. Do not touch the carnex. You should leave. Run! Run away now! Go on now, shoo! Oh, no. You don't frighten me. <laughs> Okay, you, you frighten me. They're coming. <laughs> Lord, protect me. Hello, Jack. Kathleen. Oh, uh, hello. You shouldn't be here, Kathleen. Oh, yeah, she must have snuck past you somehow. She's obsessed with this place. Yes, I know. Leave, Kathleen. Yeah. <laughs> I am so glad you're here. Oh? Follow me further down this way. All right. Oh, gee, I've never had sex in a cave before. Uh, yes. A little further. You know, I thought you interns were working up the mouth of the cave and not... Whoa! Stop! The ground ends here. Yes. It, it's a huge pit. We're here. We are? Just one more step. Are you crazy? We're right on the edge. This thing could be bottomless. Oh, there's a bottom. Uh, yeah, well, I don't... Hey! What are you doing? You want to change your life, Jack? Sure. And make magic each time you play? Yeah, but this is... Then take my hand, Jack, and step over the edge. What? No! <laughs> Number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine. The twist, the war twist. Number nine, what is the situation? They are standing still. Number nine, is he dead? Sit you down, father, rest you. Number nine, I buried Paul. You're here, in the palace of the Dacta. The what? I got him! Oh, Come on, everyone! Let's all gather round Jack in our really short skirts with swirling Celtic lacing! That sounds like a brilliant idea, let's do that. What is going on here? You have to dance, Jack! <laughs> but I'm not a... None of that now! You're our guest! You can't refuse! I, I don't really... Ah, go on! Here! First, let's get your shirt off you. <laughs> I don't... Oh, no, 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 Hey! Now, put on this slim-cut, shiny, sequin-encrusted jacket with absolutely no buttons. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, lovely. Now, this pointless headband. Oh, 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 oh brilliant. And finally, these little punsy tap dancing shoes. These? Okay, all right. Ah, uh, there you are now. Oh, sure, you look great. Doesn't he look like a right ponce, everyone? Oh, a regular lord of the dance. You ready? For what? I can't dance. For our big dance. A hain do tree. Oh, God. Whoa! My feet! The shoes! They're making me 
dance? Of course! They're magic dancing shoes! Oh, that's it! You've got it! Let's all dance around him! No! 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 Fallen into the realm of the fairies, arch on earth she. Meanwhile, the wheels of Rotvang's plan began to spin as Sedgwick, acting as a decoy, met up with Augusta for dinner at a fine restaurant, which are plentiful throughout Ireland, though way, 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 way overpriced. <laughs> Oh, they have a nice jazz trio here tonight. You like jazz. This is an advanced, tuneless jazz like Jack plays. No, it's nice. And we can even dance oh, if... Oh, cut the crap, Sedgwick. This is some kind of a trick, isn't it? Oh, no, I just thought it would be nice. What would be nice? To sit down together and discuss our situation. You mean your attempt to humiliate me? Shh. Dear, we're in private, Don't public. Patronize yeah, me. I'm just saying. Your that... condescension just disgusts me. All right. I have worked my entire career to achieve something. Yes. And I have. True. All of my outstanding success has never been about me. Well, of course not. No, I put my son through the finest schools, launching him on an academic career. I put the roof over our heads. What have you ever done? Well, I think Nothing. That I... You've done nothing. I work. I work every day. Doing what? Trying to develop new ideas. All right, there you go again, rabbiting on and on about your petty, incommodious obsession. Creating is not... Creating? No one cares about your pointless creations. Rothwang sees... No, Right Fang wants to destroy the planet. No, just humankind. Oh, he's insane. So he has issues. I have instructed you time and time again. I do not want that man around. He's my brother. I don't care. That putrid stench from his odious red hands. Gloves. What? They're gloves. Hmm. As Sedgwick was dining with Augusta, and Jack tap dancing below with Nashi, Ratvang set off in that drilling molarizer machine. Activating power. Pressurizing air filter cabin atmosphere. Engaging geophase ground penetrating radar. Adjusting cup holder. No, wait, just a little bit closer. Just jump. That's better. Activating ball casing helical organ drill nose. And finally, shifting into gear and launching molarizer in five, four, three, two, one! Yes! It's working! Yes! Yes! Oh, well done, Cedric. Your molarizer is burrowing through the ground like a well, small burrowing animal that burrows, I suppose. Soon the ultimate directed energy weapon shall be mine! <laughs> Polarizer was mauling its way through the ground. Jack had just finished dancing and prancing for Nadini Maha. Now, Jack, are you ready to play some real music? Is this all a dream? Yes, your dream, Jack. It is? Of course. That's why you're here. It is? Oh, yes. I need you, Jack. Oh, and I need you. Oh. Good. Now, release me, please. Uh, uh. For behold, the Carnix of Terror! I said, behold, the Carnix of Terror! Okay, lads, we went over this. 
What? When I say, behold the carnix of terror, you're supposed to bring forth the mummy and that big horn, yo. Now, now. I'm terribly sorry, Jack. Now. We will get this right. It's okay. Behold the carnix of terror. Now, your highness. Yes, now. Bring it out. <laughs> It's a really, really long horn, and the head of it looks yes, like a... Yes, a dragon. See? Its tongue goes... And the other end is stuck in a large, ancient, shriveled-up catcher's mitt. I think his name was, it said, Larry or Lionel or something. What was, what was Lawrence. Lawrence. Oh, yes, Lawrence. <laughs> Look at him, still blowing that horn. <laughs> He's a mummy. Well, what do you expect after a thousand years? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, okay. Remove the carnix from the mummy's mouth. <laughs> the way his lips are stuck round it. Well, pull harder then. Ah, there. Now, lads. Present the battle horn to our honoured guest. Whoa. This thing is really big. All the better to blow men's minds, Jack. What? I promise you, Jack, playing this horn will change your life forever. Forever? Or a thousand years, whichever comes first. Oh, um, well, that's kind of a lot. That's lo what you want, isn't it? Yes, but I... You want us to be together, don't you, Jack? Oh, yes. 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 Then go on, stick it in your mouth. You are talking about the carnix, right? Yes, Jack. All, all right, just checking. Here it goes. I'll start by improvising random overtones that Just blow the flippin' horn, Jack! Yes! Oh! This has never happened before! But who dares intrude upon the great hall of the Dagda? It's a giant screw! It's an early beast with a whirling nose! Down through the ground! The uninvited may not see us! Flee, my people! Ah, I've made it. Uncle Rotwang? Jack, is that you? Yes. How lovely to see you, dear boy. Oh, yes, nice to see you too. How are your studies going? Okay, but I'm actually rethinking the whole academia thing. I... Really, I see. I feel so unfulfilled, and that's why she... Oh, hey, what are you doing in my dream? Not a dream, Jack. I've come for that carnix you're holding. Th this? Yes. Yes. Come, help me get it inside this machine. But we can't take this. It belongs to her. To who, Jack? Well, to her. There's, there's no one here. But she's th there. But, hey, where'd they all go? Well, I'd love to hang about and inhale some of these psychotropic fumes with you, but there really isn't any time. Quickly, let me get this into the machine. And so with the Carnex aboard the molarizer... Rotvang began the return journey along with his nephew Jack. And would you believe that meanwhile Sedgwick and Augusta were on the dance floor? <laughs> we haven't danced like this in 30 years. 28 years, Sedge. At Dr. Helga Herkenferter's wedding. Sure! Anyway, the thing is, I feel that for both of us, this this opportunity is very unique. <laughs> Something is either unique or not, Sedge. There's no such thing as very unique. Must you always be such a pendant? <laughs> it's pedant. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. But you see, if I if, if we make this sale. The money he could go towards Jack's education, and you and I... Oh, Sedgwick, if this bingity bangity thingamajiggity of yours actually does work, then sell it to someone else. No, but the offer is... That corporation wants to tunnel through my site. 
but they could go under it, maybe. You are not selling your machine, not to them. To someone else? Perhaps, but only after I find the Carnix. Well, that's some progress. What? Uh, I, I, I said that's, that's some progress. Well, now, I'm trying to be patient with you. Yeah, I know. Then why your little pouty face? I'm not pouty. Oh, yes, you are, you big baby. Really, if it wasn't that Jack cares about you, I swear you'd be out of my house and on the street because I am the one who pays for it. What's that? It's, it's my receiver. Someone's calling. So rude, Sedgwick. I'm sorry. I forgot it was on. But just answer it. I, I should take it outside. No, answer and tell them you can't talk. Now go on, quickly, do it. Hello? Big gig to complete liability. This is big gig to complete liability. Over. Uh, Rotwine? Ah, Cedric, there you are. Listen, I've tunneled right through the gig site, have taken the Carnix, and rescued Jack! <laughs> uh, hi, Jack! <laughs> Our clever plan has worked. You can now stop distracting the dragon. Repeat, stop distracting the dragon! Ah! I knew this was a trick. You heard that? Just wait till I get my hands on Rut Vang. Now wait, Augusta, wait. Augusta Horkenheimer was not the only one outraged. Oh no, the Deeny Maha had their little Irish linen knickers in a tight, tormented twist as well. The Carnix has been stolen! We must summon the mummy. What's his name again? Larry! Lionel! Lawrence! Oh, Lawrence. yes! Lawrence! Lawrence! Time to rise! Come on now! Get up! Oh. 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 What's wrong with me? That's it! Well, of course you're a bit stiff. <laughs> You've been sitting for a thousand years. No, thousand years! <laughs> I'll explain later. The Carnix has been stolen. We must get it back. Come on now, follow me, Lawrence. Uh, follow you. I follow you. There's a good lad. <laughs> While you see, Rotvang and Jack had made it back to the lab with the fabled Carnex, where, with the molarizer sitting there humming in idle, Rotvang was about to set the next bit of his plan to save the planet into motion. Now, by my calculations, it will take me 89 hours to drill to the financial district in London. There I shall rise to the surface and blow this conix. You're leaving already, Uncle Rotwang? Yes, Jack, I must. The Earth must be saved. Tell your father I'm very sorry, but I'm taking the molarizer. He can always build another one. You're right. Oh, yes. Tell him from me. The cup holder needs to be a bit bigger! Uh, well, sure. Uh, hey, thanks for listening. Jack, you must follow your own dream. Unless, of course, that dream has been induced by psychotropic hallucinogens, in which case, you should ignore it. Probably. And the beautiful woman? She sounds too good to be true, Jack. Yeah, but I feel a real connection. You, you know, something special. Magical, even. I love her. <laughs> love? Yes, she means more to me than anything. Even the future of life on this planet? What? Oh, never mind. Look, step away from the vehicle, Jack. I would love to stay and listen, but I really must go now. Why? Right then, Quell. Uh, that's why. <laughs> you conniving rat. Ah, oh, Augusta, as charming as ever. Give me my carnage. Oh, please, Augusta, can't. Not no. talking to you, Sedgwick. This battle horn is mine! Hi, Mom, Dad. Let me into this thing on my jig. I can't! The and door handle I'm broke off! And I'm climbing through the window! I've got to stop! No, don't me crawl me through my, the window! Give me my heart! No! I said, give me that! No, I you need it to destroy humankind! Move over! I am! Ow! You bit me, you rock Now stop fighting! You'll damage the controls! Okay, 
I'm coming in. Oh, Lord. Oh, I don't want to be an academic. This is what I think of your control panel. No, no, no. Oh, 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 great. You've broken the cup holder. It was in the wrong place. I've fallen in love. And after I get my horn, my hands on my horn, Rothbang, I am going to kill you. Oh, lovely. Uh, then Irish girl. She's beautiful, and I just want to be with her. No, uh, come uh, here, get come married. Here. Now stop fighting inside the molarizer. Yeah. Learn to play accessible dance music. It can damage this machine. I won't be able to sell it. Really? Yes. You'll take up Zen and tantric sex. Here, Rothbang. You hold the carnix. Oh, certainly. Oh, finally, the horn is mine. What? What are you doing, Augusta? I'm going to take this wrench and do this. No, no. Oh, you're smashing that steering mechanism. That's not all I'll smash. Stop it. Hey, You'll make stop. love Unhand for me. days and days the way all Irish girls do. Unhand me, Sedgwick. Not until you calm down. Let me go. No. It's the mummy! The what? He's come for the horn! No! No! Do not take the carnage! Without it, I cannot call humankind! Get your arm away from this vehicle! Bad bad money! Bad money! Hello, Jack. Bridget? Oh, I'm so glad to see you. L let me hold you. No, just a second. What? That's it, Lawrence. Grab that horn. You got the horn. You got it. I got the horn. Good lad. No, I'm not going to thank you. Now bring it back to my house. You bring the horn back to my house. No. Come back with that horn. I'm dead. It must be saved. Oh. Hey. What's happening? The motorizer is engaged. We're going down! You're not bringing me down! No, no, it's drilling down! Down to the center of the earth! We'll turn this thingy off there! I can't! You've broken the controls! Oh, that's right! Blame it on me! We're out of control! You never were in control! And you're a control freak! You're a freak! You're a weak freak! Oh, I'm a weak freak! Am I? Impotent! 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 Yes! You're no man! Mom? Dad? They're gone. Yes, and so am I. W wait! Will you marry me? Oh, Jack. It's not going to work. But we have a connection. No, we don't. Oh, yes, we do. I need you. But I don't need you. Goodbye, Jack. <laughs> Wait, wait, we have a connection, please, I... Uh... Hello? Hello? Oh. Oh, and Jack, your saxophone playing is shite. Uh, no! <laughs> and that's how I found Jack whimpering all alone. Sedgwick and Augusta went off roaring at each other to the centre of the earth. Rotvang is still out there plotting to save the planet, and Nadini Maha, of course, are even now dancing beneath Knuck Nariha, waiting for the likes of you. You've been listening to The Carnix of Terror, featuring the incredible talents of Phil Proctor, Melinda Peterson, Morgan C. Jones, Schieffer Brogan, John Cullen, Sinead Keegan, Roger Gregg, and Dylan Tonch Jones. Music and sound effects by the cast. Dr. Krell and The Carnix of Terror was written, directed, and produced by Roger Gregg.
Thanks, everybody. Thank you.